Greetings and salutations, my brother from another mother. It is your host with the most, Avery here, bringing you guys a discussion video about Shameburn and how Simo. I like the guy, he's pretty cool. I've made a parody video about him in the past, but he is absolutely wrong about Chamberlain being a uh, good rogue deck choice. So with that being said, I'm going to show you why it is a bad rogue deck choice, and just a bad deck choice right now in general. This one card, y'all. This one son of a bitch card completely obliterates this entire deck. So, for those of you who did not see Simo's uh, video, I'm just going to have the deck laid out here so that you all just kind of stare at it and I'll go through it eventually. Uh, for those of you all who did not see Simo's video, he was talking about uh, five road decks that are good going into this June 12th format now that like Teratops at 1 and Norton's Band and all that fun stuff. He talked about Chamberlain being a very good choice because of the fact that you're able to stall out your opponent. Cosmic Cyclone doesn't really hurt the deck because of the fact that you know, you're know you paying a thousand life points so you're just going to help the Chamberlain player beat you quicker. However, another point that he made was that Twin Twister is mostly being side decked, which I think if you're side decking Twin Twister, I think that's just a really bad idea. I think Twin Twister is just so busted of a card that it should be main decked at the least of two. But he was saying how a lot of people are side decking it now, and that's fine. You know, the meta is going to shift. However, what people don't understand about Chamber, and this is what really irritates me when people talk about Chamber, because... 99.99% .99 of Yu-Gi-Oh players just think, oh, it's Chamber, and you just whip out your dick, and you set five, and <laughs> like, no, that that's not what you do, y'all. Um, take it from someone who's been playing this deck on and off for five plus years, and take it from someone like my dad, who's been playing the deck for over six years consistently, has not switched to any other decks, knows how the deck works inside and out, and got two regional invites back to back, playing this deck, this exact, just about this exact build. Back when he got his two invites, the meta was very different. We did not have Twin Twisters back when he got uh, his two invites, because I believe this happened, uh, like, I want to say two or three years ago. Um, well, we may have had Twin Twisters then, but I don't remember Twin Twister being very uh, prevalent then. So we may not have had it just, just yet at that time. The thing is, though, is that even though he got his two invites, he will tell you and tell anybody else that the deck right now is not a good meta choice because yes you might win game one but it's still gonna be a 50-50 shot because even if you're side decking twin twister all the opponent has to do is game two go into twin twister and then game three they're just gonna keep in the twin twisters they're gonna take out all their mirror forces and stuff and then they're just gonna smack you with twin twisters now you might be saying well twin twisters is just one card yes but it's three copies of one card take this for example All right, we're gonna just have a board here Let's say that you've got Battle Fader and, I don't know, Card Card D in your hand, all right? And you've got all of this set. Like, you've got the whole nine yards. You've got Accumulated. You've got Chain Strike, Reckless Greed, Secret Barrel, Wabaku. And your opponent, let's say that they went first. They've got the Twin Twister set. You make your play. You summon the Card Card. You're doing stuff. You set five. The opponent goes End Phase Twin Twister. Now, obviously, it's not guaranteed that they're going to hit this and this, or this and this, or, you know, whatever. The point is, though, Twin Twister takes out two cards, they get a pitcher card. That's irrelevant. Let's say that they take out these two, okay? They took out the Accumulated and the Chain Strike. You're left with this shit. <laughs> this is all that you're left with. So your big-ass play of being able to go when your opponent activates a card, Chain Link 1, obviously you do the Wabaku on Chain Link 2, Reckless Chain Link 3, uh, barrel, chain link 4, accumulated 5, chain strike 6. You're doing 2400 points of damage, you're drawing 4 cards plus damage from secret barrel, and your opponent can't touch you because of Wabaku. Because of the twin twister, that's completely out of the equation. You're left with this shit. <laughs> and this, this isn't going to scare the opponent. This is not going to scare the opponent one bit. They're going to take, we'll say for argument's sake, maybe 1200 from the secret barrel, and then you'll draw 2 off the reckless, and okay, they can't attack you for a turn, and now your back row is completely empty and then you can't draw for two turns. So, granted in this argument you could say, well, you drew two off the card card D. Doesn't matter when your opponent hits you very good for a Twin Twister. On top of that too, not just the fact that uh, you have to deal with Twin Twisters if the opponent's smart at the end phase, 
but you also have to deal with so many effect monsters in the game. I'm not just talking about Denko Seka. I'm not talking about Jinzo. Denko Seka is not seeing a lot of play right now because Paleo is kind of under the radar. But there are so many other damn cards in the meta now that just have some crazy ass effect where you whip out your dick and smack your ass and then blow up your opponent's board. Like, there's. Basically, for lack of a better term, there's too much stupid shit in the game right now to where Chainburn is just completely eclipsed. Like, yeah, you can take this to locals. And you can have an absolute blast with this deck, and you will piss some people off. But you have to know that if you're playing against Twin Twister, the opponent's just going to beat the shit out of you. It just doesn't matter. On top of that, too, you know, of course, we got cards like Royal Decree. Anti-Spell Fragrance doesn't really hurt this deck. It can slow the deck down, but Anti-Spell um, will usually hurt if, like, you're... You're already kind of behind. Like, if your opponent hits you with an end phase twin twister, and then on the start of your turn, they activate an anti spell, that can really hurt. But for the most part, anti spell doesn't really hurt you. Um, obviously, kaijus do nothing to this deck, but yet, at the same time, you know, look, look at Paleozoic, even if that deck was still a thing. They have so many trap cards that they can just outbeat your board. Uh, Infernoids can just put so much shit on the board, or at least they were they were able to when Lawn Mowing was at three, that they were able to just demolish you. Um, and basically, when it comes down to it, if you're able to generate enough advantage turn after turn after turn after turn, then really you playing Chamber becomes meaningless because you can burn them all day, but if they're able to constantly stop you or whatever the case may be, then you're kind of screwed. You know, let's say, for example, you're top decking in Chamber, which at that point you've already lost. And let's say that you have, I don't know, let's say you've got two cards in hand. You just drew for turn, and this was sitting in your hand, and this was in your hand, okay? You're going to obviously set the Just Desserts in the Ojama Trio. Well, let's say your opponent has Strike set. They draw for turn, you go Ojama Trio, they chain the, strong, the Solemn Strike, they pay 1500 So, they just wasted 1500 but now your Ojama Trio is fizzed out, you can't chain the Just Desserts, obviously, because Strike is a counter trap, and what if you needed those other three monsters on the board to get game, and your opponent's just going to attack you for game? The Just Desserts isn't going to kill them, in this case. So, there's that, that, again, goes to show that there are just too many other effects in the game right now that hurt you, even if you're not worrying about Twin Twister. So, you guys, don't play Chain Burn if you're going to a big event. You're going to get your ass beat. Um, I'm sorry to put it bluntly to you guys. I'm just so sick and tired and irritated at people saying, Oh, Chain Burn's a great road pick. Chain Burn's a great road pick. Sure, it is a good road pick if the meta is correct. On top of that, too, if Yugi Tubers are talking about the deck, then people are going to prepare for it. Like, that that's just the, the way that me and my dad have seen it for forever. If people are talking about the deck and know that it actually exists, then people will prepare for it. Even if, like, you're X2 and then there's that one guy playing Denko Seka or Jinzo in his side deck just to stop Chamber. It happens, guys. It's happened to me because that's Yu-Gi-Oh! And I have the worst luck in this game. So, let me know what you guys think about Chamber. I know that my Chamber videos actually get a lot of discussion and views on my channel, which is actually really nice, so I might do more videos in the future, just kind of like maybe a perfecting series. Um, but right now, the deck is trash right now. It loses to basic situations, just in general, whether it's Twin Twisters or not. Um, and the deck just doesn't have a good comeback game. You know, you've got Lava Golem, and that's about it. Uh, even against Mermel, Mermel just puts so much shit on the board that it's like, if you can't beat them quick, they're just going to outpace you and destroy you. So... Chamber, bad deck, bad rope pick. Don't play it unless you're going to locals. Just have fun. Thank you guys for watching as always and subscribe if you've not already.